Hi there, this is Jeanette, and today I have a new card to share with you. I have used one of the new May release images from Whimsy Stamps. This is called Tilly Dancing, and I paired her up with an older clear stamp set uh, that was released a few months ago, and it's called Magical Birthday Wishes. So I'm going to take you through how I colored up the image, as well as how I created the background. So the first thing we're going to do is um, go to the coloration. So I stamped the image on Nina cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Again, these are my two sort of go-to um, supplies when I'm coloring with Copic markers. And I am starting with the skin. You just saw the uh, letters of or numbers of the markers that I use. So they are listed in order of use. And I am going from lightest to darkest and then working in reverse to blend all the harsh lines away so that I get a nice even coloration that has some shadows and highlights and it gives the image some um, definition and makes it look more like a three-dimensional image rather than something very flat. So once the skin is all colored, and I missed the hand there, I'm going to do the hair. So I'm working with some uh, yellow reds and the E is actually, although E usually is like an earth or brown tone, this color actually has a lot of red in it. So I'm going for like a strawberry blonde type of color for her hair. You can see that I'm using more of a flicking motion um, that mimics hair strands so that again it gives it more of a realistic look. And I'm just blending anything that is harsh in between those sort of flick lines in the middle. I'm blending it with that lighter color. So here, this is the E09 um, or 08 marker that I'm using. And you can see that it has a lot of red in it. So um, it's going to look a little bit more red right now um, while I'm putting the color in. And then when I start blending it with this yellow marker, you can see it sort of tones it down. Um, and it makes it look really, really pretty. Um, I don't usually do red hair, but um, I thought for this image I would. I'm going to darken up some of the areas with this dark brown marker. And I'll just blend anything away that has some harsh lines. I didn't realize that this was skin, so I had to go back and get my markers to color that up. I'm going to work on the flower now. I'm using some red violet colors, um, just two or three of them. You'll see them here on the screen. And just a very sort of light coloration, keeping it not too dark. So again, working with the lightest, moving to the mid-tone here to put some of the shadows in. I'm just blending it with the light and then I will go in with the darker marker. Just add a little bit more definition here. Being careful to follow the lines of the tutu here. And then I will go in with my mid-tone, blend into that color, I decided I needed a little bit more depth there, so I added some more of the darker color, and then I blended everything with the lightest marker. I'm going to be doing her top here using some of the same colors I used for her hair, but did not add any of that sort of E08 color, so it reads more as yellow, but still sort of matches the whole, the whole image as a whole. So I'm going to cut this out now, and once it's cut out, I stamped the image again on some Bristol Strathmore paper, and I'm cutting it out using the largest die in the hand-stitched nested rectangles from Whimsy. And now I'm going to create the background. So I'm using some tumbled glass, and I sort of want the light to be in the middle and sort of the... Um, right hand of the paper. So just to put a little bit of tumbled glass there to create some lightness. Then I'm going in with Mermaid Lagoon, starting at the edges and working my way in, but being mindful of where I want the light to be. 
So this back area here behind her is going to be darker. I'm going to add more color there and I'm going to be careful more towards the front of the image. So I'm doing it this way because um, I wanted to use the Bristol Strathmore paper. I find that it blends so well with inks, but I did want to color my image in Copic markers. So that's why it was colored in Copics and cut out. I'm going to glue it on top of this. Working with some deeper colors now. This is some um, black soot, I think it's called. I'll have li everything listed at the end of this video for you. And you can see that's bringing in sort of a, a deeper color, but it is making the brighter area actually look more bright. I'm just spritzing it with some water from my Distress sprayer and then dabbing it with a paper towel to soak up the water. And you can see you have a really cool background now. I'm going to color in all those black dots. I want to color them with um, a yellow or gold Wink of Stella marker, but I felt if I colored them up or covered them up with white, um, I would get a better look with the Wink of Stella. It sort of makes it more opaque and lighter so that when that Wink of Stella goes on top, you can really see that it is nice and gold. So I'm just dabbing them with the Wink of Stella and I did go over them again to just really reinforce the intensity of the color. Then I'm taking my Sharpie here and I am just adding little white dots everywhere. I'm going to glue the image on using my Zig glue pen so it will dry clear using my tweezers to make sure that I'm really lining it up perfectly. I'm going to take my Copic Multiliner and just color in any areas where I can see some white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second largest die from that nested rectangle set and I'm going to center it around the image and I'm going to cut it out. And the sort of frame part that I'm left with, I am going to adhere that flush to my card base. You'll see that in a minute. And then the middle part I'm going to pop up with some foam adhesive so it sort of sits off the card. To add my sentiment I'm going to use the Misty. I want to put these two words magical and wishes but I'm going to stamp them separately so I can really line them up tight to each other. I'm going to use my anti-static tool here and some Versamark to stamp the magical. Then I will sprinkle some gold embossing powder on top. I'm going to be using the WOW embossing powder, which is my favorite gold embossing powder. Tap off the excess. And then I will go heat that up with my heat tool. Then I will go back in and stamp the wishes. And that way I can really nest up the wishes right underneath sort of the G that's hanging down there. So it um, looks like it's actually one stamp. Then on the inside, I am going to stamp a, another sentiment that comes with the magical birthday wishes set. So this is a sort of a longer sentiment. And I will emboss that as well with the gold embossing powder. And you'll see that in a minute. Once I heat emboss it, you're going to see how pretty it looks. And then I'm just adding a few of these little sort of sequins and little gems. Um, they're all different sizes and shapes. Just a few. Um, just to really reinforce that, you know, there's sparkles and magic from her wand. Um, you don't want to put too much, but a little bit just really sets the card off nicely. Just using my quick stick here and my Zig glue pen to make sure they're adhered nicely. And my card is done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. A full list of links and supplies can be found below this video on YouTube or you can check out um, my blog posting for this card. Thanks for watching.